his wonderful hand sketches to illustrate what we were discussing all the time yesterday and today to present these pictures to us. Um, and maybe somebody can help. Um, so um, let's go through them one by one and you can explain them to us, okay? Yes. Yeah. Hi everyone, so I'm Monica. I'm part of the ETH Zurich team and I'm basically the artist here that illustrated uh, some of the drawings and some of the concepts that you all talked about today and yesterday. So this is just a logo from uh, Future ICT 2.0 that I tried to capture and we also tweeted it on Twitter. Um, here we started already trying to find out what the possible foundations for a society could be and we just started brainstorming between each other to find out what those could be. Um, these are the next ones are going to be some, some drawings that I made for um, each group for the workshop. Um, just to visualize some of the concepts and questions that came up, like resilience and what it could be. Um, faster reasoning, so we get to faster solutions for the problems today. Learning and education, and how we can make it better. And tragedy of the commons and design of mechanisms. <laughs> and possible research that could be useful to find out what society could look like. And then we had some, some great talks uh, yesterday by Professor Helding and all of the other great speakers. And I tried to just capture some concepts like circular economy, which could be like a maze and you're just trying to find your way through it to <laughs> make it circular. And then the trust issue, um, of technology, yeah, should you trust it or not, what, what should you do, and um, then the eye god, which is like a big eye looking over society, trying to take in all of the information through the technology that we all use nowadays, um, yeah, let's see what else, recreate society, old stuff like education, finance, uh, healthcare and all of that and make it new and then big data just like a huge data tree that is sucking up all of the information from from us as people um, this is another concept that uh, one of our speakers used even in his presentation about tragedy of the commons it's just another idea how to visualize it again these are from today actually like uh, from some of the speakers that were today already up here on the stage, big data is maybe like a black hole that just takes in all of the information and then it might just get lost in it. <laughs> and cyber fragmentation, you know, uh, will democracy survive AI and big data and just having a robot holding the earth and basically taking care of it. <laughs> um, connected society, and should we invent society ourselves, and who should be responsible for that? Then resilience as a puzzle, you know, if you take one piece out, then the structure can still stand. Uh, I also thought it was pretty cool having uh, data as the new oil of today, so I kind of tried to get that into the concept. Bottom-up participatory optimization, like people getting into growing a tree with their data and information and ideas. And a universal healthcare system, which I thought was super interesting, and getting that into the computers as a simulation, connected with privacy. And online privacy, very important. <laughs> And then I just thought I would capture the discussion group that we're having just now. All right, yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you.
should say that I always found it quite inspiring to interact um, with artists because in these times of change, I believe we need to communicate with the public with all means that are available actually to us. And science is one means, but also arts is another means and performance and so on. So I'd like to encourage you all to engage in these kinds of interactions because that contributes actually to the cascading effect that we need in order to spread the word, the ideas, um, to make sure the world would look like as we hope it would look like in the future. Now, when we talk about the future, of course, this is mainly among um, something about the young people, right? <laughs> and many of the events that I'm attending is dominated by people who are kind of 50 plus, and I have a few rare, quite a few white hair already. So, this final panel discussion should therefore be run by young people. So, who are the people who consider themselves young? I could feel like. <laughs> <laughs> would like to see it on the panel. Please, um, yes, um, Monica. Sure. Who else? Yes, yes, come on. Not at all. Not at all. Two more seats. Um, let's see. It's not electrical seats. Uh, <laughs> come on, two, two more people. Good. Uh, would any of the young people like to moderate even this panel discussion? You would want to. Good. So I'm heading over. Hi, so you already know my name, it's Monica, so we just, I just, I was just here, so there we go. Hello, my name is Mateusz Strzyński, I'm working at YASA, I'm a postdoc, uh, working on ecological networks. Hello, my name is Matthias. I'm a computer scientist and I'm working in this area like for 15 years or something. Hello, I'm Wei. I'm actually, I'm also from Yasa, although I don't think we have talked before this occasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm young also being here. I'm here since March. So. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, I would also expect to introduce myself. I'm Michel. I'm from the Center of Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Um, and I'm uh, Aniko, I'm working at Danish Figure Research Building at the American University of Vienna. Good. So, um, do we have some preset questions? No, we, we can just. <laughs> You're free. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, so um, you, some of you are from diverse backgrounds, so as I understood, you more to art, this is a physicist, a theoretical, <laughs> computer scientist. <laughs> All right. Well, not theoretical, that's why. Um, so, one of the questions that, that, that I have is um, um, it seems like we have huge challenges, right? I mean, th this is maybe my personal view, but it seems like we have huge challenges ahead of us. And one of the uh, reasons why we have these challenges is partially because of a huge division in our society. Yeah. So um, people have mentioned um, economic divisions, so between say Western countries and and and, and, rather, and and maybe less developed countries, if you can put it that way. Um, but uh, but even in a developed country, there are huge divisions like uh, cities uh, versus countryside. Uh, educated versus uneducated, um, or educated, like university educated versus maybe less university educated. Um, so maybe we as younger people, uh, what, what, what do you think that we can contribute into um, leading us all into 
um, a, a safer future, uh, especially considering that in the past, when technology said, like, take the industrial revolution, right, uh, take uh, things that happened before, usually when these things came, there needed to be some kind of a constructive disruption. Yeah. So, um, so what are your, 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 what is your take on this? Um, Well, I would say that uh, the problem we are facing is that if we are putting it in game theory terms, we've got certain goals like sustainability, um, social justice, equality, and uh, towards these goals or also, well, connected society, so just being uh, present physically for the people around us, not getting into bubbles. Um, and we can behave in different ways. We can be the collaborators, we or the contributors. We could live sustainably. We could, uh, well, uh, make d decisions maybe difficult for ourselves or difficult in the short term, but beneficial in the long run. Or we can be, as we would say, uh, in the classical examples the defectors, the ones that, uh, that, that cheat, the ones that uh, then consume at the expense of the others. And the actual problem of today's society, and also here of Austria, of Poland, uh, of our economical system and also of the way we, we think being programmed in a certain way, is that it's the other way around. So the game is put in such terms that actually people working towards sustainability in their own lifestyles, so living the minimalist lifestyle, which also has its huge costs, are the ones that feel like defectors, because they see they are losing at every point, they are losing their ability to influence, they are losing their comfort, they are losing their respect in the eyes of the others, so in this terms, this is very difficult moment and moment of great change when we are finally getting conscious of the tremendous challenges and of their importance to also encompass them not only in our papers but in our practice, in our lives. So there are people that form like hippie communities, uh, Bonn Projekt uh, in, in Vienna or some uh, Leben in Gemeinschaft, these are the new Austrian projects I have learned about, that just want to live the way we would like to live or uh, live with our neighbors the life we would desire. Whereas the 99% of the societies, us included, are stuck with the system that was designed towards, towards different goals and towards different picture of the world. So in this sense, we might say, no, I just want to join the right way of living or the right way of thinking, reasoning, or also shaping my future career. Also, maybe not being so bound by, uh, by obligations or by uh, decisions we have already taken in our past. That was maybe pretty long, but <laughs> I hope for feedback and discussion. It's all right. I don't have a question. What do you think of the sustainability of uh, our healthcare system? Because I have the feeling it's more like a sick care rather than a healthcare, because uh, people pay uh, more for getting cured rather than preventing diseases. Actually, people in the audience, you uh, may also participate. If you have uh, comments or ideas that you want to share, just raise your hand and we will uh, hand the microphone over to you. Where? Oh, ah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, this is not about healthcare, this is a comment about the talks this morning. So, um, I counted, and there were three talks this moment, uh, this morning, that mentioned that Kasparov was beaten by a big blue in 19, whatever, 94. Um, for me, that's 
nothing to do with recent technical, te technological advances. For me, that's an old phenomenon. And in fact, it was at the tail end of his career. He was no longer the best. And we've now had for eight years, you know, a 19-year-old wunderkind dominating chess and never trains with chess computers, who's beaten everyone and was subsequently beaten uh, deep blue. So for me, the chess example, to refer to the chess example as a case, look, computers have been humans. The fact that it's such a desperate example, and it was compared, compared to the bulldozer, it's so obvious it's what's going to happen. No, it hasn't happened. It's, complete, it's a completely wrong example. And it is a case which should be a bulldozer case. So, to me, it seems that the digital age um, is at the horizon at the most, rather than also, the example of Pokemon Go, for me, that's desperate. Okay, that's, <laughs> that thing is a complete fluke, it's going to be a complete, you know, flash thing. It's probably already done. Probably of the 2,200 million people who used to do it, 20,000 still do it. Um, we, could come, we can come up with these examples, but I just sincerely don't think that the digital age is there. It's a horizon at the very most. Risk and resilience, and it's actually, um, at least from a scientific perspective, I think we're quite clear that. Um, okay, well, we're rather clear that the principle is that preparation generally pays off than after the fact. In many cases, in disaster risk management, in you know, like managing our own health, is a risk management kind of issue of a health risk individually for community for country. Generally, uh, preparedness pays off. Um, um, but on the other hand, from a system's perspective, I think, you know, there's a legacy effect, you know, the system has been there. And, and, and one of the talk uh, in this morning ended with, you know, the famous Einstein's quote, you know, if you want to solve the problem, we have to go to the next level of thinking generally. So, um, so it may come, come from a, a better understanding of the whole as how this hub was designed for. It also may come from uh, more bottom up, you know, some of the participation, you know, like the, the, the you know the other about the health system study comes from. So that's a quick quick answer. Um, but I do have thoughts about it, the first question, but I guess we can talk later. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I also want to comment on the health system, but I just want uh, to say that um, seeing those. Do, uh, well, there are, people are trying to digitalize everything. This is what I see also I'm working for a company where digitalization is one of the biggest uh, income stuff. So it's very important for big companies to digitalize everything because they think there is some, some benefit they can uh, generate by it. So and I think this is completely wrong. It's not, it's not true that that there is a benefit for society, but there is only a benefit for an elite that is already an elite, and it kind of works like a pyramid game. And uh, I think um, we have to be very cautious about what, how, how to transform the health system and how we do it and what means do we use. Like, for example, I had very big discussions about security of e-card. Uh, or, for example, about the, how the data is stored, because um, there is there has to be some something that uh, identifies me as a person with this data, and at, at the point where this data is used. But on the other hand, it doesn't. It that is not required that the data is stored in a server in Vienna. So. Um, from a computer scientist's view, I have to say this is possible. It's possible to separate those things. It's possible. It's possible to protect those things. So, coming back to the first question, what should we, what can we contribute to making a better society or making a better future, or even for our children, um, is I think we have to identify what we are doing wrong or what, what um, people before us had done wrong and they learned from it. For example, we had this car example, 
we learned that it's not good to drive over people, so we stopped it and we made um, lanes so people don't uh, drive over each other and we build roads and stuff, so we learn. And this is, again, I think it's very important that we talk about what we're doing. For example, I take a picture of somebody and post it on Facebook. Is this okay or not? So this is, I think, something that we have to decide for us and um, over, over time we will we'll see if the majority is for the, the, it's, it's okay to post stuff or it's not okay. Like the, I personally am very opinionated about that, but um, yeah. So this is what I wanted to say about um, about. Um, does, does that mean you're, you're very much against it, or what is? No, I'm not against the digitalization at, uh, as such. I'm um, against un, un, undesigned digitalization. Like I, I just digitalized something because I think it's cool, and funny. Um, I think this is this is dangerous because um, at the moment uh, we give up control or we give away control. It's not us who is in control anymore, and it's. I think this is the big question that will come in the next years and ages. Who will make the, dis the decisions? And we had these discussions already with this, uh, is, this is, is decision making crowdsourceable? I, I don't know if it is. Maybe we have to try it out, but we, maybe we have to design some space where we can, we can try it without having big impact. I don't know. Okay, so um, since this is kind of spontaneous, uh, <laughs> I also want to introduce some uh, spontaneous thing. Um, so um, uh, we, we have been a bit segregated here into the younger people and uh, more senior <laughs> people. So <laughs> um, it, uh, for me, something that would be interesting is actually to know um, do the more senior people have specific questions to, to, to the more younger people because you know it's it's kind of maybe there's like this generation gap and it would be interesting to know um, uh, whether you have specific questions that uh, that could be addressed in uh, in this on this podium. Well, I have just two questions. Uh, one is. Um, in many cases, um, it's claimed that young people don't care about privacy and their data. Is this really so? Second question, and maybe I keep that for later. So the, the question is, do young people care for privacy of their data? Specifically, yeah? Is, is that correct? More, yeah, more or less. So. More, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so I can just talk from a user point of view. Um, I am pretty yeah, digitally online and available, I would say, like on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of those uh, platforms. And I do have to say I kind of am more careful lately, like in the last couple of years, of what kind of information I put up on those platforms because um, I kind of grew up with Facebook and all of those platforms, so um, at first I didn't care at all. Like It was just like, oh, this is a cool place where I can just put up pictures and my friends can see them and I can just write comments and then people comment on my comments, so it was just this exciting thing, but now as I just grow older, um, I have to say that I have also like um, connections with people uh, that I work with and and then I'm more careful about what kind of posts I put up. I don't just put up jokes anymore or or pictures where, I, where I'm like maybe in a bar or something because that could get misinterpreted uh, as in many cases or you know just promiscuous stuff that would make me look bad basically. So um, I guess everybody's just trying to maybe make this this image of themselves nowadays when when they're on an online platform that just looks perfect on the outside yeah, 
is because it doesn't mean you don't go to that bar. It exactly. means you don't post it, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> or you just send it to your more private yes. friends instead of just putting it up for everyone to see. So the network, as, as soon as the network grows that you're in, the more careful you are about what kind of stuff you post, I would say. Responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I am. Um, sorry, just a, just a quick uh, addition to that. Uh, so, I, 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 once a week or so, I, I work with uh, younger children, and it is. Can you use the mic? Uh, sorry, I, I work with younger children that are like uh, 10, 12 or so, and it is very interesting how, how, how they use um, a social network. I forgot what the app is called, but there's this application that, that you, um, you can use to uh, upload videos of yourself, um, uh, mimicking, um, uh, like, uh, s s uh, wait, um, pretending to be like a, s a song artist and mimicking the, uh, uh, some, some behavior. And they post this <laughs> and, and upload it, and then there's like contests, competitions, who's the best. I, I forgot what the app is called, yeah, Musical.ly or something like that, right? And, and they loved it, and they're all doing it, and it's just like, okay, but in, you know, like, uh, there's, there's no restriction whatsoever, so, and there's not much of a parental guide, there's not much of a supervision, so it is, um, um, yeah, just, just to, to add on hers that truly as we grow, we, we, we tend to see it differently, but if you're younger, it's just like, give it all away. Sorry, so. I totally agree to what you said, and I've also seen that um, when, Friends of mine were watching all children and they're working in kindergarten and telling me stuff like that. Um, what I wanted to tell is um, a couple of sad stories actually. I've worked for a company where I had to build Facebook games uh, that have been played by over 8 million people and I saw a lot of data going from, through this and I also saw um, test cases where they had classes of users trying the game and stuff like that. So, yeah, what I wanted to say is that um, if the question was if, if how, how we, um, how, how did we say it again? How important. How, yes, how, how important, how, how are we um, dealing with this? So I think um, the main problem is that it's, it's all about understanding the impact of what we do. It's um, what in user experience uh, research is called the feedback loop that is not immediate enough. So it's not direct enough. So I do something and I don't see what I'm doing. I don't feel it. I don't see that the data is stored over ages or, or, and it's transported to the states or something. I don't see that. I don't feel it. I don't understand it. So I can't learn from what I'm actually doing. So, and this is... <laughs> Actually, companies build that in by design, so they don't want you to see what's happening behind. They hide the complexity of, of, in, of programs and networks. For example, features on Facebook, you, just, you only get them if you have um, a, a maximum, uh, a certain amount of friends. Before you don't have a million friends, you don't get these features. They're not there. So interfaces change just because of your usage. And this is also, again, hiding um, how you can learn how the system works. So um, it, it's really, I think it's also a generation problem. So are you, are you guys or are we guys not scared that these things will outsmart us, basically, you know? Like, yeah, um, it's, 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 <laughs> a, it's a danger that could happen, but I, but I don't think that um, it's not the technology that is outsmarting us, it's people outsmarting others. And those are the, those that I, I'll talk uh, about in my first comment, that it's like this pyramid, where the people that already have this information, already in all these patterns, uh, that how can I do this and that, they already know that, they don't share it, and so they can benefit from it. And this is which is going on, and I think um, this is the challenge of our generation. We have to find out which structures have to be broken up, so that um, yeah, our children can have also a, a nice world to live in. Um, just a quick follow-up of what you just mentioned. I, I remember a quote 
of uh, Lewis by called what we call man's power over nature is man's power over some other man with, with nature as a means which I can see here we can almost switch nature with technology you know what we call man's power over technology or technology over man whatever way is exactly some man's power over other man with technology as a means and, and it has happened and, and you know in the past it will probably still happen in the future and it's you know for me, technology is generally neutral, and, 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 and probably very few of the breakthrough technologies were designed from the beginning with the intention to do the, the large good or the large bad that it eventually ended up. And, and it's still people, um, you know, and through society uh, that make that happen. Uh, and, and that's a follow up for yours. And the other thing about beginning, I think um, one thing I'll you know say, assuming I'm still that young enough, you know, I mean, I guess our generations, compared with people who are 10, 20, or 30 years older, um, I tend to personally think that we have experienced a life in a faster pace than the older generation, but probably not the case for people who experienced World War II and then you know those kind of you know people here. And, and in a way that we have seen more changes, changes happening faster uh, than a lot of other people, probably just about 10, 20 years older. So that we are, I, mean, I don't know how, how representative I can say, but some of us at least are more, more, more used to changes. Um, maybe not, you know, and, and maybe more, I just tend to think that we probably need to be a bit better in, in, in dealing with uncertainty dynamics and all of these, and, and also in a way that uh, we're talking about resilience. One, you know, for me, like I don't know why we talk about 4.0 already today, but for me, I was thinking about from one to four. One might be just survive shocks. <laughs> Two is coping with shocks. You know, not to you know beyond surviving. Three is probably adaptive to shocks. Four is transformative. You know, making use of shocks. And, and I hope that the, the younger generation are. Better in, in making use of shocks, and at, at least my understanding of resilience is that uh, a resilient system has to experience, and also a person has to experience a lot of small disturbances, uh, you know, from you know once upon once a time, so that we're all always you know being agile to to to, to small shocks, so that when big, really real big shocks come, uh, we're not that you know that bad. Um, yeah, like, like, don't have the same passport all over. <laughs> 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 so, may I just, uh, just in, in support of what you said, I, I think one of the ways how, how I think our generation uh, notices that uh, we are or we have to be more adapted to change is, for instance, the fact that um, uh, that we, we find ourselves not, in the, not so much in a position anymore where we can settle at a certain place, like how maybe our parents and grandparents used to do. J just because the world is so connected, and, um, and especially as scientists, you find yourself having to travel globally a lot uh, because, uh, because this is just your career. But I think it's not just for scientists, but, but it's for, for also other careers, but, but it's maybe more related to, um, to our generation adapting and, and, and um, uh, in, in maybe at a faster pace, or we have to adapt at a faster pace than maybe what it used to be. Good question. Okay. So, I have a general question actually, because I, I'm really curious about how you perceive all the challenges we mentioned in today. Because I have the impression that in the grown up, in me and the <laughs> are some kind of sort of echo chamber. We are convinced that we are living in a world with a lot of troubles, a lot of challenges, a lot of catastrophic events are going to happen. But perhaps this is only our perception. No? <laughs> <laughs> Just for a minute. But uh, okay. <laughs> 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 this is the catastrophic event. Yes. And uh, so I'm just curious, I mean, what is your perception about this? And uh, what are the, some of the Challenge is also for your career, for your life, and for all the things you care of. Yeah, I, I think I'd like to, to add. Okay. My question uh, would have been: Do 
you think you can accomplish the goals of your life more easily than our generation or other generations? Or do you just do more things, but do you get more distracted? I have no idea, just let me know. Okay, so, so maybe we try, to, we, we try to answer it this way, so, so that you, you, we can all get a turn on, on the first question. So do you um, um, feel like there are huge challenges and, and things that are, and, and how, and does, it, does this trouble you and how do you deal with this? Maybe we can have each one of you give us a quick answer to this, right? And, and start with you. Yeah, so for me at least, I feel that we have way more challenges than um, the older generations because first off, um, the way I see it, couple of decades ago was just that it was a straight line you just had to kind of like okay so I, I go to primary school then I finish high school then I go to university I study this and then I boom after I finish I basically have a job because there are so many places and so many positions that you can fill basically um, but nowadays it's it's just so unstable and so unknown um, at least from my perspective, like um, the trajectory of a career, it can go from, I don't know, from starting out that you want to study medicine and then it's like, no, this is more interesting. So you go back to figuring that physics is making me more interesting and then it's like, no, I don't think this is my uh, area. So you just go back to maybe, I don't know, uh, mathematics or something. So it's, I feel, Kind of like a swim against the stream at first and then maybe after a year all you know through education and all of that uh, time you kind of figure out what you want to do and um, still you don't have a stable job afterwards because um, it's just going to be for my, like maybe a couple of years nowadays. You're, you're in a position for maybe like five years, which is still a long time. And then you just move on to the next position because uh, that one's more interesting or something, or it offers more opportunities for you. So um, I'm just thinking of my grandparents who uh, were working in their jobs for 40, 50 years or something. And when they hear that, uh, I switch jobs or something a couple of years after I just started. They're like, oh, but what happened? Did, uh, was it so bad? Did they treat you badly or something? But no, it has nothing to do with that, you know? So for them, the concept of change is, is hard to grasp in that sense. So it's just different. <laughs> yeah, may, I, may I make a short comment here? Yes, yes because uh, go ahead. I think that this is not a this is, this is not a, a, a pure generational problem because when I look back for instance at the stories I have heard from my grandfather, he was still born in, in uh, under the, not a democracy, he was, was still the, the, the Kaiser, I mean, the, the, the emperor, who was a uh, monarchy. Uh, it was still the monarchy, so he, he had the, the first world war and then he had the second world war and with lots of changes and he was working in all kinds of jobs uh, during from well, after the Second World War, it was then at some point a stable job till his pension. But uh, but I think that this is uh, 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 even in the, the this is the post-war um, intermezzo that uh, of of, uh, of a seemingly stable job situation. I uh, I don't believe that this is uh, uh, that we can say that all the generations. But can that happen? We have too many opportunities and we cannot choose it, we, too much, we have too much freedom. <laughs> because <laughs> it's just a question, because as you said, your grandparents were also switching jobs then, but what were their goals? And what is the difference between our goals and their goals? Because that... Uh, and what is the reason why they switched, right? Because uh, for instance, what she mentioned, but I, but I also told you, is like, there are so many opportunities uh, partially, so this is one of one of the blessings of our generation. It's actually maybe also one of the curses that there are many opportunities, and therefore you do maybe many different things. Uh, but I was wondering, uh, you, you mentioned your grandparents, but you did not mention your generation or, or, or the, the you know like 
you know, like our parents, basically, <laughs> generation, not our grandparents' generation, because it, um, um, because it seems, at least, it seems to me that 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 these people did have lived in a local place, right? Have jobs in a local place, went to school in a local place, go, went to university in a local place, and got settled in a local place with a house, you know, uh, which which we don't, which I think that we don't experience that much anymore. I am convinced that we need to reinvent society. I mean, that was my original question. I mean, it's not a generational stuff, sorry. For me. Everyone is nodding. <laughs> so, coming back to uh, the question about the challenges, mm -hmm. I did my PhD in theoretical particle physics, speculating what else could exist, what other basic constituents of matter. And there is a huge effort put in this direction uh, that doesn't result in a huge progress in our knowledge. Whereas I could get convinced that there are some real problems we are having and you can observe how much matrix similar Maya you have around you in the society, in the economy. So these are the real problems. So that's why I also decided to switch my fields towards complex systems and research at YASA towards those global sustainability problems. So, yes, I, I'm an example of people who recognize this, but it all comes at a cost. So, when we come to the question of, uh, of the job or of our situation, uh, maybe an extremely example can be that my contract is for one year, whereas the minimum time you can lawfully rent uh, an apartment or even a room in Austria is a year and three months. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the greatest strain on us living with the world of uncertainty and with the challenges we are facing is on our personal life, is on our relationships and possibility to found a family. On, in two ways. So one is the material way and another one is also connected with uh, us uh, also having the perfect image outside for, for the external and perfect expectations for our partner, for example. And also not, uh, not always willing to invest in repairing things but being used to the thing that you can always have a new one. Mm -hmm. And also having the experience that the new one or the new uh, changed world behind the corner is actually better than what we, what we knew from, from way before. Uh, I, I want to respond to Victoria's questions um, uh, behind you. And I'm probably like something like in between her uh, in this grand old dichotomy. Uh, okay? So I personally think that we don't live in a time of extreme uh, worse problems than ever before. I think the problems we're trying to solve are the old problems that have been there forever. And perhaps with the exception of poverty in developing countries, we, in our little house, have finally reached the sense of security and luxury that we're starting to seriously tackle these problems. So they're new in the sense that we are so lucky that we can make completely <coughs> science hubs in houses of former aristocrats in Vienna, and we can finally seriously think about the old problems. But I think it, it is not true that these are problems that are getting worse. So the, the question was if we, if we think if we live in a worse yes, time than if, if, if it would have to be reinvented. So I have to agree with you on what you said. That, um, and, and also to add on that, um, I think that uh, we, through this uh, whole information uh, centric lifestyle that we live, um, people that tend to be 
talkative or something, like it's a character thing, an individual style. Um, they tend to be narcissistic, narcissistic and, and, and tend to, um, I think, uh, concentrate on, on what they believe are their problem, uh, are, uh, are a problem of society, but actually most of those problems, I guess, I think are problems of, of their perception of reality. So um, this is what I see when I go <laughs> on Facebook and, and see what everybody else is posting there and, and I always mm -hmm. ask, I continually asking myself what problems are you trying to solve? Or what, what are you trying to, to talk about here? What's, what's the point? What's the essence? What's the substance behind, behind uh, your, your expression? And so uh, all day we are living in this flood of information and I think this is, a, this is a challenge that hasn't been here uh, 30 years ago. So I think that it has changed. And I think in this way we have to reinvent society. Like how do we handle information? How, how, which information is important, which isn't? So, um, but and who decides what is important and what is yeah, not important? It's not, and it's not, I think this is nothing that, uh, that should be decided universally. So this is it's also like, um, I think we are a very bad sample to ask this question because um, there's a big digital divide between you know, and, and there is a lot of people who already have access to the internet but only to very slow internet. So they can never do video telephony or, or something else that we are taking as granted the moment we are having internet access, we're using stuff and apps and stuff and I don't know what, what else. So, I think it's really hard to, to, to give a universal answer to this question and um, I think it's very individual depending on which, what we see as challenge and what not. Mm -hmm. I think this is a sign that we are running out of time <laughs> or yeah. how much time <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Okay, uh, quickly challenge, I agree with you that I think that look back in history, I mean first I don't think the earth has a Problem. You know, no people on the earth probably will be doing pretty fine. And life doesn't have a problem. You know, no people in life will go up. And it's human society that I guess we're talking about. But this, I, I guess, look at the longer uh, time span, we're probably at the most peaceful period, 50 years in our history. And we have probably the fewest dictators in this world uh, than any time in, in our history. So, in that sense, probably not much. And also in terms of humanity, I think we used to be small tribes here and there. The chance for each of them to go extinct is much higher than for the whole humanity to go extinct now. But of course, we're creating new problems at a whole global scale, that's systemic risk, uh, which we have never faced before, that may drive us uh, and toward extinct. And of course, there are other people trying to do this migration to Mars, of course. Very few of us could be you know, taking on that journey. So um, it depends, I mean, but, but I guess the perception definitely is sure because of technology. We know way more than the challenges, even for a lay person, and of course more for scientists probably, uh, about these grand challenges at a global scale, uh, which may, I mean, I'm, I'm rather often pessimistic, especially you know, on, on issues like biodiversity, which I, I used to study, I still you know, uh, study to some extent. Um, um, but on the other hand, in terms of action, I, I, I tend to think that we need to be optimistic to some, you know, uh, and in that sense. The other thing is about um, goals. Um, I, I keep finding that I have to, you know, co-define goals with, with colleagues, with, you know, with friends, with people that I want to work with. It's just that um, the more we, at least for myself, I found that I just can't do things by myself. So I can't impose my goals to the others who I want to work with. So I would love to co-define the goals together before I, you know, and in, in that way, I don't know exactly where my exactly goal is, but I tend to think that we are in a better position in achieving um, some something. All right, thank you very much. I have two more questions. Uh, I'd like you to answer them very quickly with just one sentence. Okay. Um, so, question number one: If you were Larry Page or Mark Zuckerberg or the king or an emperor, you know, how would you change the world? 
with the billions and all the needs that you would have. So who would like to go first? Get rid of the king system. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look Well, design something that will stay longer, like an evolutionary principle that will let the contributors prevail and change the society gradually and evolutionary. I think with, with this a huge amount of money, which is so incredibly amount of money, I, I, I think I would, I would try to decentralize what is centralized now. <laughs> so what I would do is actually I would just take the money completely out of the equation and just focus on on information, on trying to figure out how to connect with people and um, get some some knowledge and, and data into the whole thing that we can exchange ideas together and try to figure out a way how to uh, live without focusing on money or capitalism or anything like that. I think money is always like the main problem that kind of destroys everything and it, it's not about money, it's about us people because at the heart of, of each person we are the same. You know, we want basically the same things. Even if we have different ways, we still want the same things. So we need to figure out how to do that together. So nobody was in favor of a king system in the future. I heard the decentralization of this, and uh, obviously, I tend to agree. Now that brings us back to being normal citizens, right? So as normal citizens, what do you think we could do or change in the future? So like, if there's a New Year's wish or intention, you know, what what kind of thing is it? that we can change ourselves, or should be changing ourselves. I think that we should change is that, that um, com um, education should be changed, I guess. Like, um, there should be a class about how to handle this life, <laughs> this digital life. I would say embrace minimalism, relax, and embrace wilderness, embrace what is real in the world rather than follow the patterns that are imposed on us by the society. Um, I would also focus on education actually. Um, I'm kind of just thinking of uh, famous universities like Harvard or Princeton who I feel are still kind of in the old ways and a lot of universities are like that that oh you can only study if you actually go to the actual location but um, nowadays I feel that online educations have become more popular and they have developed into actually much better ways to connect with different people from different countries and be able to uh, learn from each other in that online environment and I think that's a much better way to, to study and learn than just sitting in a classroom and listening to someone who just talks in the front for hours and then just fall asleep after a while so I would just focus on online education. Um, I would say uh, be more tolerant to differences and embrace diversity. Right, yes, yeah, same room, so.